Hello! I thought I'd just show you how to make a, another block, another traditional type of block. It's called Balkan Puzzle. I'm not sure why it's got that name. I really need to start looking into some of the history of some of these blocks. Um, it's quite a busy block and I've made it using two and a half inch squares. You could make the same block using larger squares and of course you'd have a bigger block. Um, and it wouldn't be perhaps so small uh, for, for the pieces, but I've used two and a half inch squares to make it so I don't think it's too small and quite often we've got a lot of leftover two and a half inch squares from other projects and things so it works quite well. So what we end up with because of the size square I've used is an eight and a half inch block so a finished sewn in block will be an eight inch block but it should measure eight and a half inches and it's made out of it's like a 16 patch it's got four squares by four so that's 16 but each square that we've got is actually a half square triangle square so we've got a fair bit of joining to do so just to make one block normally you need 16 squares for that but because every square is joined we need a total of 32 squares um, but in a variety of colors so I've actually used four colors I'm not sure what a traditional coloring of this block would be um, I haven't as I said had much to do with this block I just thought it looked interesting and so I've used um, a colour for these triangles out here, so you need eight squares where, the, where I've got the orange, um, you need eight squares where I've got this tealy colour, and you need two each of these other colours in the centre here, plus you need 12 squares of your background. And then, so everything is joined, so when I'm joining them up, I like to, to do it this way. You can make, do, join your blocks and make half square triangles different ways, but I've chosen to do mine this way. So I'm on the back of my lighter coloured square where, where that applies, I'm drawing a line right through the middle and one half an inch away. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that. So with your ruler, you're just going to lay that on your square right through the diagonal and I've just got a mechanical pencil here that I use for all these things. Draw your line right through the diagonal, then slide your ruler across so that a half inch marker on your ruler and I've got one that comes right through here, sits right over that drawn line and then draw another line so that it's half an inch away. So I've done that to all my squares. I've already gone through and drawn all my um, lines on but just to show you, and we've, we've done the two lines, we're going to sew both lines so that this bit that we're going to be cutting away that we don't need for this block can be saved to use for later. I'm getting quite a collection of these, it's quite fun really. And um, oops. And so I'm just going to go to the machine now. I've got four of these ready. So you can chain piece these through. Um, and then we'll go back and do the second line of sewing and then we'll cut them, press them. So for chain piecing, I'm just going to pop the next one in and continue on sewing. Now these ones here are not on the on the light background because these are the centre. It's a slightly different colourway for this block. These are my centre bits um, here, so I'm actually joining a colour to a colour here. It's been quite fun looking through some of the traditional blocks and perhaps using some of today's fabrics. Traditionally they were often done just repeated throughout the quilt, but uh, they probably don't need to be uh, repeated exactly as they have been in the past. Sometimes they have sashing between them. Sometimes you can just use a block on its own or alternate it with another block. Okay, so I've just chain piecing those ones. I'm just doing that second line of sewing there. So that didn't take too long to do that much. And just snip my threads off. And now I'm just going to cut these little, I'm basically cutting between my two lines of sewing there. So a quarter of an inch away from your longer diagonal sewing line there. So just and I'm just cutting that off because this is the bit we need. We don't need that, but by joining those 
doing that seam line, that's already joined for another project. So I'm saving all mine and I'm just going to have some amazing project come out of them, I guess. Who knows? So I've trimmed all those and now we just need to bring the iron across and I can press them. So I have already done some of my squares so that you didn't have to watch me doing all 16 of them. Now generally I would suggest that you, like where I've got the white or light background, I would press that seam into the colour. So I'm continuing, continuing on with that theory in general. So now I've got my piece two and a half inch squares, like they don't need trimming because of starting out with a two and a half inch, we've ended up with a two and a half inch. So now I'm just going to lay my, my pieces out. So it looks like I've got my lighter orange where I had the other orange. This is going to be fun. This is why it's called a puzzle, I can see that now. Because it is a puzzle to me. <laughs> That's going up there, and that's going there. Oh, we're on the way. There. And it's definitely a puzzle. I can see it now. It's puzzling me. Get the bits in that I can do it more easily. So I've got a yellow and green centre, and one more piece to go in, which I think goes that way, yes. So what we should have is these little points coming out here, because it's like it's a swirling something. And then I'm just going to join those up, initially in pairs, so I'm going to flip that over and that over, and I'm going to chain piece those through, and, and then another set of pairs to go through there. So now, because we've pressed all our seams into the darker area, they're not going to nestle like we normally like them to, but if you're just careful and position that over the top, this you could either go back and press your seams the other way, or stitch them together. It does make for quite a bulky intersection, and I'm just going for this option. Because I'm a machine quilter and things, and the seams in at the, at those intersection points aren't really a problem to me. Um, I don't worry too much about that, but if you were a hand quilter, the, where the seams intersect can be quite a problem if, this, if it's too bulky. Now you just have to make sure you don't turn these around as you sew them together and stitch the wrong sides together, because then you really would have a, pu a puzzle. So I think perhaps we need to consider the name being Balkan Puzzle, but it is a bit puzzling. So I've finished joining them up into pairs, as you can see, and I've laid them back down again so that I make sure I haven't turned any round as I've sewn them, and it's still looking like it's sitting in the right place. So now I can join these two pairs, four sets of two pairs, and then we'll have four strips. So back to the machine. So probably not the fastest block because there are so many pieces, but a very satisfying block. And I think you could probably play with the colour placements a bit and make it look quite different. But that's your job. shortly we'll be going to the iron and we can press these
Now, so I'm going to press mine so that the um, all the seams go in opposite directions on each row. So we'll start at this end and press this way. Good. Now my next <coughs> strip, I'm going to turn around and press the other way so that the seams go in the opposite direction so that when we sew these rows together, those joining seams will just nestle in together. This one goes this way again. So I'm just holding it up and letting that slide over. So there's, there's a small amount of resistance because of these points it creates a little bit of bulk when you're pressing it and also when you're sewing it, of course. Uh, you could possibly press the seams open, not something I do very often, but that might help if the bulk seems to be being too much in behind there. So there, we're still looking like it should look for the block. So now I'm going to join these rows together. We're nearly done. Just make sure that those seams are nestling in together where they intersect there. if you were making multiple blocks you could be doing several at a time. I'm just showing you the one so I can only really show you. A little pressing issue here. Now we're ready to join those two together before we do any more pressing. So we've got that half of the block, make sure you put them together the right way, and that half so that your colours are joining in the middle there. So we'll pop those two together now. Again nestling those seams nicely. I tend to do it by feel, you could pin it if you prefer to do it that way. I find if I use pins, I just get attacked by the pins all the time, which is not comfortable for me. press it and have a good look at it. Right, so now I'm just going to press all these seams in one direction. So as I said, some of these intersections are going to be quite bulky, um, which mostly isn't a problem except if you were perhaps were hand quilting. Um, when you're machine quilting, you can machine quilt through that level of bulk without any trouble at all. So there we've got our block that we've just made. It's going to measure eight and a half inches, and yes, it measures eight and a half inches, so it's going to be an eight inch block when it's set in. So this is the Balkan puzzle, so these are slightly different colours. When you, you could set them all different colours like that, you could do a repeat of similar colours. Um, I've had a little play with some blocks that I've repeated here. So this is this the same block, only that I've got lime green where I've got this bluey colour here. And on, on the one we've just made, 
we've got these bigger triangles that are formed here I have, I've done all in the same color when I was making up this little quilt I alternated them I did some that were so if you look at this bit of here as the block I did the opposite ones with the blue and the, those two with the orange and I mentioned earlier that these triangles here are going to form a pinwheel you can see how that pinwheel forms and because I've alternated my colors here I'm going to get alternating if I'd continued on making it a bigger quilt I'd have alternating blue pinwheels and orange pinwheels as well as my swirling green things there's a lot going on in that quilt and um, so when I say to you have a little play with your color placement that's the sort of thing I mean think about it maybe draw it up I usually draw everything up here I've just used uh, just a regular pencil I usually draw all my things up on some graph paper um, that helps me a lot with color placements um, because I'm working often just with pencil I don't have any particular colors so it's quite interesting the effects you can get with just that gray and white sort of look to see what's going to stand out um, because there's nothing to stop you changing color placements but using a piecing arrangement that's traditional so that's the Balkan puzzle and it can be a little bit of a puzzle keep an eye on how you're joining your bits together it would be very easy to turn them around and join up the wrong bits but I think it's a very pleasant block and great for using up some two and a half inch squares if you've got bits and pieces like that left over from projects because you could use the block on its own you could put it in a cushion you could make um, little table runners all sorts of things you don't have to make a huge quilt every time and thank you for watching the Balkan puzzle